one stop for reckless driving years ago. After the first couple of quarts we put in there and it seemed to be doing worse than ever, I was really, really doubting. This is looking very promising. Welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome. We're in the middle of a bunch of oil burning experiments on this Toyota Corolla with a 1ZZ FE engine in it. We're trying to get it to stop burning oil as cheaply as possible. So that means starting with chemicals. If you've been following along, you'll know now we have some high performance lubricants, passenger car engine oil in the engine, and it hadn't been doing so well yet. A little background. The engine was originally burning about a quart and a quarter of oil in 300-ish miles. We got that down to roughly the same amount of oil in 800 to 1,000 miles. Then we tried High Performance Lubricants Engine Cleaner sent to us by 82KID and actually saw an increase in oil use, taking us down to one and a quarter quarts in about 600 miles. 82KID then sent us six quarts of High Performance Lubricants Passenger Car Engine Oil to follow up with. So we topped off with the HPL 5W30 and 600 miles later, we were having to top off again. So it appears we're still in a regress state since switching over to the HPL products. Today, we continue with the HPL oil experiment, seeing if it just takes more time to do its thing. As you know, one of the necessary ingredients of these experiments is mileage. The faster we can get miles on the Corolla, the more experiments we can do, the more products we can test. So we recently had to go on a trip to Great Lakes, Illinois to see my son graduate from Navy boot camp. I thought this would be the perfect time to put some more miles on the Corolla and get this HPL oil experiment over with. until my wife pointed out that we'd have to drive through the same mountain passes where the Corolla dropped a cylinder last time. I think we're running on three cylinders. I can't get above 50 miles an hour. I'm only in fourth gear. Her point was taken, so we ended up driving the Honda Fit. However, then my son was transferred to Pensacola, Florida, and he asked if we could bring his car down there. We thought, this is a somewhat flat trip. Maybe this would be perfect for putting some miles on the Corolla. So.
we just passed 300 miles somewhere in Georgia where at Kia Boulevard, I guess this is where they manufacture Kias. So let's see what the oil looks like. We've been driving pretty fast. I've been trying to keep up with Feisty Kate and it's been hovering near 80 miles an hour. So I've actually let it sit here for a couple of minutes. So most of the oil would drain back down. Oh boy, not looking good. So we are more and halfway down to the bottom dot at just over 300 miles. Hopefully we'll get 500 out of it this time. Definitely nowhere near 800 to 1,000. Continue for half a mile. Merge onto I-85 South. just pulled me over I have no idea why yet I just pulled over here to film a video and he followed me in with his lights on he says I didn't stop at the stop sign back there but I saw him sitting there before I even turned so I know it did stop at the stop sign so I'm not sure what's going on here there he goes I think he saw I was out of state and knew I wouldn't come back to contest the ticket Well, we're not doing as bad as I thought. Gone a hundred more miles here. And we aren't much further down on the dipstick. We might make it 500 miles. I've been stopped for speeding years ago. Do you know what you did? Yes, sir. I've been stopped for reckless driving years ago. Do you know what you did? Yes, sir. And this time I was stopped and he said, do you know what you did? And I said, no, sir. And I honestly didn't because I did not roll through the stop sign. I literally saw him sitting there before I even came to the intersection. There's just no way, no way. So did you get a sight? Uh, yes. I am livid. The only reason I call it pulled over is because I have a South Carolina plate that says move over if you can safely and I could not get over. There were two cop cars pulling people over. 
this cop car and the car that he had pulled over got over and immediately got into the passing lane to go around this guy. They were going about 40 miles an hour. So while I started slowing down, I still didn't have time to get over behind them before I passed the other police car. So there's no way I could have gotten over because there was not space because the cop was literally right there going 40 miles an hour in the passing lane. So no citations for my wife in her whole life, no citations for me in over 25 years in any state. Then an hour and a half into Alabama, we both are individually given citations. Look, you just said we're dealing with degrees of probability. One in 41 million. Really? Yep, it's basic probability theory. A little later, still in Alabama, we have to get some gas. Regular, 93, plus 89, Supreme, 87. Which button do you think most people would press? slightly this way so hopefully it's not as bad as it looks regardless it's below the dot and we aren't even to 600 miles yet start with a full court hopefully you can hear me it's pretty windy out here okay and in this one we are at just below 20 ounces and it's probably going to take just about this whole thing. So a quart and 20 ounces brings us almost to the top dot. We probably actually need a little more. But I only have one quart to spare right now, so we're just going to leave it with that. We had a pleasant stay in Pensacola. out on the beach for a couple of hours. <laughs> Visited Uncle Sandy's Macaw World. Are you a good bird? Who's a good bird? Are you a good bird? And on the morning we headed home, 
I had the Lone Star brisket hash from First Watch. Might be the best breakfast I've ever had. Then we went to look for Mystic Spring. Never could find it. So we hugged my son goodbye and got on the road. But then I had to pull off to take the exhaust cam off the car. And it just so happens that this General Lee was in the parking lot we happened to pull into. Though to me, this appeared to be a very well-preserved knockoff. If you ask John Schneider... What's the number one mistake? Simple. Interior color. We never had a General Lee that had black interior. If you're interested in what an authentic General Lee should look like, check out this video right here. like that tight and then turn it that way so you got to hold it with two hands there you go no 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 <laughs> perfect time to have a flat tire my daughter wanted to change it so that if it ever happened to her she would in her own words not have to wait for a boyfriend
that's a good idea. Looks like he's smiling. It's like somebody dropped something on the Corolla. White paint. That's dented. That's dented. Very sticky. You. Very sticky. Or you want to wait for a boyfriend? <laughs> Just grab one and pull it out. I hope the plastic cannot get in. There we go. Let's see if you can thread that in there. You might have to use the pliers. Just push it through there, like threading the needle. Get it started. And once you get it started, you can grab it with the pliers and then pull it halfway through. I notice there's a split on the end, so don't let it pop out. It's about halfway. More, 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 more. That's good. We're gonna take some rubber cement and lubricate this. Now this is a glue, but while it's wet, it acts like a lubricant. So we're gonna put, oh, we'll put that on there. Now stick it in the hole, but don't. Uh, yeah, push it into the hole, but don't push the whole thing through. You might have to turn it back and forth a little bit. Push hard. Mm -hmm. Hard, hard. Before the stuff dries. Okay, stop. I'll do it. There it goes. Alright, so I got it in. Don't want to go all the way. And then I'm just going to pull this out. And that should stay in. Now we can put air back in the tire and we can trim that off. That'll work. It's usually pretty hard to lift it up on there. Wait. All right. I put the bottom nut in first and it'll hold it flat. I usually use my foot to hold it while I, while I stick a nut in. So we are just over 500 miles. And we are about halfway between the dots. That might be the best in a long time. Well, I guess it's worth it to keep on going. Still have a couple more quarts we can add. Maybe this is fixing it. So the last go round, we probably needed to add oil at 500 miles, but we didn't check it until it had a little more than 500 miles. And this time we're still halfway up on the dipstick at 500 miles. And keep in mind, this was all high speed interstate driving, which we usually guzzle oil on the interstate. So this is looking very promising. I have to admit, after the first couple of quarts we put in there and it seemed to be doing worse than ever, I was really, really doubting, but it looks like something has changed. So we'll keep going with this one. It's like they're battling. Every time these people put theirs off, those people put theirs off. Okay, we're at 612 miles. This is where we're usually having to add oil, at least lately. Hmm. It appears the oil has become very dark. You can almost not even see that bottom dot. It's crept down a little. Let me pull it one more time. Love you. That is a very defined mark since the oil is so black. So, we're improving again. I think we'll get back up to at least 800 miles. So something is changing for the better at the moment. So we'll keep going. 
Okay, let's see how we're looking at 700 miles. Well, we are definitely still in the running. I think we can get at least back to the 800. Yep. Look at that. That is good. That is good. I bet we'll get at least 900. And if we're actually improving, this might even slow down more before we get to the bottom. So who knows? We might go back over a thousand. All right. Well, that's some relief. All right. Let's see what we have at 813 miles. We are a little bit above there. Let's keep driving it until we get exactly to that bottom dot. 850 miles. Okay, it looks like we are right at the bottom dot. Berryman's got us down to a quart and a quarter of oil and 800 to 1,000 miles. We are back in that zone. Let's add some more HPL oil. Now I only have one quart left of the six quarts we started with. So it should take eight ounces. So take it down to the 24 right here. Absolutely perfect. Now I don't think I usually weigh in my opinions on things like this, but I actually think this is going to improve with this last quart here. I bet we will get 1500 miles on a quart and a quarter this time. Let's reset the trip. There's the oil trip. Reset to zero. There's our actual mileage. I had to pull over here because something feels different. I don't know if it's because I drove the fit last and it is just underpowered or what, but it just feels like something has opened up power-wise in the Corolla. So I pulled over here. I'm just gonna do a really hard pull up to the speed limit. We're getting close to 800 miles. So I'm gonna bring it on up to the 800 and go ahead and do another check on the oil. And if we haven't got to the bottom dot, then we know we're at least back on track. So here we go. Wait until these cars pass. Uh, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should just go. Well, some people definitely got it worse than us. I like to keep these videos below half an hour if possible, and I think this one has dragged on long enough. So, no more driving montages. Let's hurry this thing along. 724 miles. It's looking pretty close to the bottom dot there. The engine is cold right now. Yeah, that is right on the bottom dot. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed. Time for something more drastic. Okay, let's recap. At 192,744 miles, we began this experiment by topping off with high performance lubricants, passenger car, engine oil. After that, every time we reached the bottom dot on the dipstick, we topped off again with HPL oil. The car now has 195,490 miles on it, which means we've driven 2,746 miles with the HPL engine oil at some level in the car. And if you recall the last experiment, we added HPL engine cleaner to the car and we never did an oil change afterwards. 
So HPL products of some sort have been in the car for over 3,000 miles. Now I know there's probably going to be some debate over whether or not we should have started with a complete oil change and used all HPL engine oil. Let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. However, at the beginning of the experiment, we saw an increase in oil use. Then somewhere midway through the experiment, it looked like we were getting back up to where we were right after the Berryman's treatment. But then as you saw at the very end, it looks like we dropped down a little again and didn't quite make it to the 800 mark. So I would say for all intents and purposes, the HPL engine oil experiment was not successful. Now, is there another highly detergent motor oil that might work? I've had several recommendations of using Redline or Amsoil or of course, Rotella T60, I think. There are lots of oils out there that people say will really clean the engine and they might do that. You all have submitted so many great recommendations. So what I'm gonna do is go back through the comments and pick the top five recommendations. So that means the five recommendations that were submitted in comments that the most people gave likes to or the most people submitted themselves. Then I'm gonna put out a post where y'all can pick the treatment that you think will work on the Corolla. Depending on how this goes, this could be the last oil burning experiment on the Corolla. If this next experiment doesn't work, there is a very good chance that we are going to tear down the engine and fix it mechanically. As always, thanks for watching. Please comment below and I'll see y'all in the next one.